Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Antioch, Fort Worth. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning. We're a life-giving, multiplying, reproducing church, and our vision is to share and multiply the life of Christ in the church through new disciples, new life groups, and new congregations to the glory of God and the joy of all peoples. We're so glad that you're here. One of the words that we were hearing this morning was from Psalm 118, verse 24, which is, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I want to just encourage you right now, in your homes, where you're at, turn to somebody and say that verse to them. you got to smile when you say it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to rejoice. We're going to worship the Lord today. We've got all kinds of great things planned here. Just jump on in with us. Let's engage our hearts right now. Right now, I'd like to welcome up Julia Ekpo. Well, good morning, church. Yes, my name is Julia Ekpo, and I am the elementary pastor here at Antioch. So right now, we're going to have our kids connection. So kids, this is for you, okay? Uh, like Jamie said, uh, this morning, I think we were kind of on the same wavelength with just feeling joy and gratitude. So one of my favorite verses is Psalm 51, 12, and that is, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Now, this is something that I pray. I pray the scripture whenever I'm having a hard day because we need it. We need our, the joy of our salvation restored to us. And I know that this has been a hard season for so many different reasons. So this is a prayer that has been prayed a lot in the ECPO household, okay? So what does it mean? What does it mean for God to restore the joy of our salvation? Well, we know that Jesus came down from heaven to earth and to show us the Father's love. And then he died on the cross and rose again. And when he died, the veil was torn, which means that we get to have access to the Spirit of God. And we get to have access to heaven because of the Spirit of God. So God has invited us, his followers and his believers, who have his Holy Spirit, who have access to heaven, to carry it out. We're invited to partner in the creativity that God lives in. He's so good. He's so creative. And we get to partner in that by carrying the Holy Spirit and carrying heaven everywhere we go. So here's your challenge for the week, kids. How are you carrying heaven into your household? How are you carrying heaven into your Zoom calls and your class papers? We get to see heaven multiplied by the number of believers that we have. And when we share God with other people, we're inviting them to be light bringers and to be heaven expanders. So let's cover our schools and our neighborhoods and our families in heaven and Holy Spirit this week. All right. We are uh, going to transition into worship, and this morning is Communion Sunday, so we get to even participate in the death, burial, and resurrection by remembering that. So somebody go grab some juice and crackers, and please stand up, put down your cup of coffee, and let's worship our good, loving Father. Jesus, we love you. You are so kind and so good. You are, are the light that can never be extinguished, Lord. You bring heaven to us and you let us carry it with us wherever we go. We thank you, God, for this gift. We thank you for this life and we thank you for this day that you have created, Lord. Expand our joy, expand your spirit within us, Lord. We pray that our homes and this church would be filled with your spirit, Lord, that, that heaven would be tangible today. We love you, God, and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Be with us, Lord. Guide us. You're so good, Father. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. We love you. Amen.
moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. So my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire darkest night oh you are close like no other thank you Lord I've known you as a father oh I've known you as a friend
together the victory. My name is Paul Coulter. I'm one of the elders here at Antioch, and this morning we're going to share a time of communion together. I hope you have 
uh, grab some crackers and juice or something that you can take communion uh, there in your homes with your family. And this week I've been thinking and meditating on the, the Gospels where uh, Jesus took the bread and he said, this is my body. And then he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that I've poured out for the sins of many. And that's what we're commemorating again this morning as we share this time of communion together. But there's just something that God is highlighting to me about the word communion that I think might be a blessing to you guys and an encouragement. And that is, I sense that God is saying, come and join my union. Communion. Come and join my union. On that night that Jesus took that bread and that cup, he went on and on about, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me, and I am the vine, you are the branches, remain in me. And you may be feeling like uh, because of something you've done, you've blown it, and you can't remain in Jesus. Or maybe you're worried about what you're going to do tomorrow or next week. When Jesus said those words, it was only hours away from when all the disciples would leave him and abandon him in his deepest, darkest moment of despair. And he knew, he knew that their only hope was to remain in him and to come and join the union that he experiences with his father in the shared love that they have with the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, as you uh, take that bread and you take that juice, commit to one another and commit to the Lord to join the union that he has. I'm going to pray, and then you can take that at your uh, leisure as you're ready. Lord, I thank you, God, that you have initiated with us, that you haven't just stood back waiting for us to get things right. Lord, but you stepped into our world. You came and initiated your love for us, just inviting us to join in that kind of love. And so, Lord, we, would you do that fresh work in our hearts this morning that we might join in to your love, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We received that word this morning. We want to be united to you, Jesus. And for every single one of us, Lord, wherever we're watching from, wherever we're doing communion from, Lord, we just say that we love you. Lord, we treasure you, and we want more of you, Jesus. We want to be united with you, God. We want to come to you no matter what, no matter what else is going on in our lives. We want you, Jesus. And so, again this morning, we remember you. We remember you and we treasure you this morning, Jesus. And it's in your precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, it's 
Good to be with you this morning. My name is Graydon Jones, and I'm the youth pastor here. And it's just, it's an an exciting thing to be together, even when we're not together. And so I hope everyone's having a great morning. And I want to highlight a couple of different groups of people this morning before I get to some announcements. And first off, it's our guests. We just want to say, if you're joining us for the first time this morning, we are so glad that you're spending your Sunday morning with us. Thank you for being here. And we would love to connect with you and tell you more about Antioch and how we believe in Jesus and his purposes in the earth. And so well, the easiest way for us to do that is if you text CONNECT to 682-204-9917. And one of our pastors would love to follow up with you this week, tell you more about Antioch, and even pray with you if you'd like. So once again, thank you. We're honored that you're with us this morning. The other group that I want to highlight this morning is our high school seniors who are graduating. And we have an incredible group of seniors, and this is who they are. I'm going to read it for you. Uh, Ariel Tickle, Jake Ashabranner, Thomas Raquelli, Grace Tubbs, Kayla Benninger, Austin Bird, Joanna Rodriguez, Brianna Moore, Mariah Coons, and Colt Nickel. We just want to say that we are so proud of you and we love you. We know that this is not the graduation that we all expected, but we just want to say we love you so much. And for a lot of you, you've been here for your entire life, and some of you have barely been here at all. But regardless, we want to come around you as a church and celebrate you and bless you this morning. So for everyone watching, uh, if there's a senior that you know out of that list, I want to invite you to pray. Pray over them and bless them this morning, and you can even join in with me right now as I pray a blessing over them. So Jesus, we love our seniors so much, and and Lord, we're so thankful uh, for each one of their lives. God, we're thankful for the ways that you have used them in this church, in this community, and God, we bless them to walk with you all of their days. Lord, we bless them to, to have a great summer and fall, God, wherever they may be going, Jesus. We bless them in the name of Jesus, and we pray that your favor would be on them. Lord, I pray that they would feel treasured and loved right now by you and by us. Lord, we come around them and believe for their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Way to go, seniors. We're really, really proud of you. All right, we'll have a few announcements for us this morning. And the first announcement is that we actually have an app. Yes, it is true. And so if you don't have the Antioch Fort Worth app, then we would invite you to download that because that's where you can get sermon notes, discussion notes. You can access discipleship resources, find out about our events, and much, much more. And so make sure you download that and keep it in your phone. The second announcement is that we are doing a welcome summer bash for all of our Antioch families from the kids ministry all the way up to 12th grade. And so that's going to be on May 29th from 10 to noon. And we'd love to have you there. We want to celebrate summer and celebrate you. We're going to have goodie bags and we may even have some Steel City Pops. So make sure you save that date because we want to see you there and celebrate you. And our last announcement here is about our communication here at the church. We really want to love you well by communicating well in this season. And really a great way for us to do that is for you to join our text communication where a lot of that's going. So if you're not added to our text communication, then make sure you text Antioch to the same number there, 682-204-9917. And that way you can keep be up to date on everything that's coming up here. All right, well, at this point in our service, we're going to be transitioning into the offering. And I just want to say that this weekend, I felt like God reminded me that everything that he does is an overflow of love. And in the same way, I believe that that giving is an overflow of love. And let me just say this. We are so thankful for your love in this season. We are so thankful for the way that you've continued to give, that you've continued to be a Nathan people who are given to God and given for others. And so may this offering this morning be an act of love, an act of worship to God, and a way to treasure one another in this time. So there's going to be a couple different ways to give. They're going to pop up here on the screen. And so you can choose whichever one is most convenient for you. But hey, let's be a Nathan people in this time. Join me as I pray over this offering. Jesus, we love you and we worship you. And Lord, we ask that you would put your hand on this offering this morning. God, would you bless it? Would you further it for the kingdom? And Lord, we pray that every single bit of giving would be an overflow of love, God, not from anything else, but just from a place of love. Lord, we love you, we treasure you, and we lift you up this morning, even in our finances. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, this morning we have the privilege and treat from hearing a word from our lead pastor. So I'm going to go ahead and welcome him up onto the stage. Y'all give it up for Jamie Miller. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing? How are y'all doing? Got, got our... It's a roar in here. It's just, there's so many people. Um, production team, yeah, all of y'all, and wife. 
Man, open your Bibles up to Romans chapter 8, verse 22. We are, as a church and as a people and as humanity on planet Earth, we are going through a time of great trial right now. And, and the picture I've kind of had this past week is that it's like a tunnel. We've come into this tunnel that we're going through, and we don't know exactly what life is going to be like on the other side, but we know that change is going to be coming. Pressure is on us right now, and change is on the other side of that. And the truth is, we don't always like change. <laughs> um, you know, but change, you know, growing things actually change. Growing things change, and changing things challenge us, and challenging things force us to trust God, which leads to more growth. It's like this upward helix, and we're in this change process. And so, we're finishing up our series called This Changes Everything about the resurrection today. And so in the last few weeks, we've been talking about the resurrection and the new day. Uh, that new creation really started with Mary in the garden with Jesus raised from the dead. We talked about the, the resurrection and the journey, how we're on the road of life with Jesus and we're to look to him and everything in the scriptures, on the road, breaking meat, bread and eating food together, and, but also just in the way we remember him with fire in our hearts. Uh, we're, we're talking about the resurrection and peace and how God breaks in through Jesus in behind our closed walls and meets us and proclaims peace to us and, and calls us to join him on his mission. As the Father sent me, I'm sending you and to be a community of forgiveness. So all of that is happening. We talked about resurrection and restoring love. That God, Jesus is always inviting us. Come on, do you love me? Then, then join my purpose. Lay down your life for others. Feed my sheep. That's, that's an ongoing thing. And even last week, we talked about resurrection and hope. And I'm going to be hitting that some more today because the resurrection really is about hope. And we want to pull to today some of these different pieces of resurrection. We're not, we're not summing it all up. There's so much to say. It's going to take an eternity, you know, to, to figure all that out. But, man, well, one of the things I want us to see is, is pulling some of these pieces together and acknowledging some of the assumptions that we have that, that sometimes don't help us. When, when we read the truth of resurrection, and yet we have some assumptions from worldview, from the, the world that we live in, and, but we also want to cast vision today for how to live this out. So, going to be pulling some of those different pieces. And, you know, each of the resurrection stories has a challenge in it. A challenge to live a certain way. A challenge to, to keep moving forward. And the, the surprising thing about the, the end of the Gospels is that Jesus is raised from the dead. And then he, it's a challenge to go and live for him. You know, and I, I want to contrast that to... The, the kind of the dominant Christian worldview way of talking about the gospel is that it's, it's sinners in us and that we're sinners and that Jesus died for us so that we can go to heaven when we die. Now, that's not untrue. It's just not how the gospels proclaim the resurrection. They, they, they don't say, okay, Jesus is raised from the dead and now you can go to heaven. You can have a spiritual experience and go to heaven when you die. Instead, it's Jesus raised from the dead, and he says, come follow me, live for me, walk my way, join my mission, join my purpose, be witnesses of me, go proclaim forgiveness in the world because of, uh, because of what I've done. So all of that is happening there. Be willing to love and suffer and lay your life down and point to him with everything. The resurrection from the dead helps us to see the connection between right now and then. Like, people expected the, the coming age to bring justice and peace and all of those love and all of those things. The Jews expected that. They just didn't expect it to happen, that coming age, to break in in the middle of time. And that's what happens in the resurrection of Jesus. Then breaks in to now. And so that's this huge thing. The future is somehow broken into right now and we aren't just scrapping all of this we're not just out of here we are living right now in ways that make a difference for our lives and for our world god will restore and god will redeem and god will renew heaven and earth coming together heaven and earth coming together new creation 
Paul said it. I read this verse last week, and I want to read it again from Romans chapter 8, verse 22. And we know that the whole creation has been groaning. The creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we eagerly await our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. So we are awaiting something, resurrection. We're awaiting something ourselves, but even the whole world, the whole creation is awaiting something. And we're awaiting this redemption, this restoration of all things that's promised, this new heavens and new earth. And even in that passage there, the creation is waiting like in the pains of childbirth. So it's not like the creation just is scrapped. God gives up on his plan altogether. No, there's a, there's a mother and there's a child. There's a relationship between the old creation and the new creation. So it's, it's like, it's, re, it's not the same, but it's related. And the same thing is true for us in resurrection. It's not going to be the same. We're going to have a resurrected body like Jesus we're going to be raised from the dead, and it's not going to be the same. But it's also not going to be like a car and a fish. It's going to be a serious upgrade. The resurrection body. Wow. You know, it's just, I, I love thinking about this. And here is where the common Hollywood assumptions about heaven, you know, the, the cartoon figures on the cloud floating around playing a harp for forever, is, is kind of boring, you know, and is kind of not a biblical picture of heaven, of heaven that comes to earth. And so that, that's, a, that's a big deal. It may be funny sometimes, but it's not biblical. And it, it may be funny, but it's really not helpful. And it fits within this larger, uh, this larger Greek worldview of dualism between material and spiritual, between things that are real and things that are kind of not real, between us and our real everyday lives and between the gods that are up there. And that, even that worldview of dualism is, is heartily embraced by uh, the Enlightenment. And we are children of the Enlightenment, of rationalism, scientific method, and what you, the objective things you can touch and see and taste and feel. That's what's real. This, th this stuff is real, but spiritual things are somehow not real. And so that is the, that's the world that we're swimming in. That's the milieu that we have to deal with. It's just, and, and so when we talk about being out of here, it's not the vision of the New Testament. The vision of the New Testament is that God made a creation and he said it was good. And then we, through sinful choices, brought about this fall and the introduction of evil into the world and this the, 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 it puts the creation itself in this groaning place of it's not right, it's not right. And we know it's not right. We know we're not right. And so God, in his great goodness, made, made a plan for Jesus to redeem us, to restore and to make right what was wrong. And so, so those are just huge things that we have to process through. And God's plan to do that was through the sending of his son, through the incarnation through the life and the ministry and the death and the resurrection and the ascension and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, so all of that is going. The gospel is the good news about our redemption and about the redemption of the creation. So it's like, you know, the, the resurrection is this huge thing. The New Testament speaks to this over and over and over again, I'll go to one of the most famous passages about Jesus in the entire New Testament. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. says, he is, uh, just, uh, and I'm just going to read it. It's so hard for me not to just stop. <laughs> I love this. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. 
and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Do you see? This is a cosmic picture of Jesus and how he's bringing all things together in him. Things in heaven and things on earth. The, the, what's to come is broken in in the coming of Jesus Christ. It's just, oh, it's just, it's beautiful. And we often talk about this around here at Antioch. We talk about being a signpost people. I don't know on the camera if you can see this, but legs kicked up and, and I'm, I'm pointing. We're a signpost people. We point toward what's coming. And we welcome that, we welcome that future in creative ways, in the ways that we live right now. Uh, we want to be a signpost people. We want to point to new creation. And here's the thing. A signpost is not a map. It's not even a photograph, but it's like, it's like a road sign that says, this is the way. This is the trajectory. You know, like you're coming into Marshall, Texas on I-20 from, from Shreveport over there, and they put that sick road map up that says El Paso, 797 miles. Mainly because they can. <laughs> Pretty crazy. <laughs> But, but that's, a, that's a road map pointing, this is the way to El Paso. And we're people that say, this is the way to new creation. This is the way God wants things to be. And so we live lives that express that in the right here, in the right now. We want to express that God is good. His reign is good. His good reign is breaking in through us. He's making things right in and through us. So here's the main thing. One soundbite for today's message is that our hope in the resurrection helps us to live creative lives in the power of the Spirit and point the way to God's future. Our hope in the resurrection helps us to live creative lives in the power of the Spirit and point the way to God's future. So I want to just talk about a, a few themes of hope here in the resurrection. And, and I'll just mention these briefly and then we'll get on to some, just some practical ways of, of thinking about this. But I want to encourage you, especially you theologian types, uh, you learners and book readers and that kind of thing, if you want to dig deeper on this, go pick up a copy of N.T. Wright, one of the greatest New Testament theologians alive today, and his book, Surprised by Hope, Rethinking Heaven, the Resurrection, and the Mission of the Church. So with that, let's, let's jump into a few of these themes here. The first one is Seed and Harvest. This is a hope and resurrection. It's about seed and harvest. And that's the way Paul unpacks this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, the whole chapter is just loaded. We don't have time to go through the whole thing. But look at verse 12. And he's talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Now, one of the things I'm trying to say here is that so much in our culture, we've equated resurrection from the dead with heaven. But Paul's saying very clearly, he, and this is, I want us to get this, he, that we are going to be raised from the dead. Because Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, and he's the first fruits. And there's a, this seed dynamic that's going on here, a first fruits dynamic going on. If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are found to be false witnesses about God, for we've testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. I mean, wow, that's like 
believe in the resurrection, believe Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the power of God. That's, the, that's at the very heart of the gospel. That's at the heart of our faith. And there is this seed thing happening that is going to be, we're put in the ground, but we're going to be raised in some way that's beautiful and different. Verse 42, so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Skip down to verse 50. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I'll tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will all be changed. This changes everything. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. So this is where this is going. This is one of these pictures that God wants us to see that Paul's unpacking for us in the power of the Spirit. We're into the ground, but we're raised. Not just, I, in, in another, another piece of this, so seed and harvest, and it's closely related, and Paul touches on it right here too, is a victorious battle, second theme is a victorious battle. He goes on there and he says, after, after saying the mortal with immortality, when the perishable, verse 54, has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? So there is a victory that Jesus is bringing over sin, over death, and over the devil. And all of that's being manifested through his incarnation, life, ministry, death, resurrection from the dead, his ascension, which by the way is Thursday, Thursday is ascension day on the calendar. Two weeks from today will be Pentecost. And we'll be talking about that in case you didn't know. But that we think about those things and it helps us. And But there's a victory there over death. And I, here's something I've just... I'm always amazed, if we don't think deeply about this, we think, okay, I'm just, I'm out of here. Resurrection equals a disembodied soul in heaven. No, it doesn't. We're not victorious over death if we're not raised from the dead. Good. Trying to preach. <laughs> Woo! So, so another theme is citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. Turn back to Philippians Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. So here Paul says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there. So, so we're waiting for him to come. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So there it is again, resurrection. We're going to be changed. We're going to become like him. We're going to have a resurrection body. And so Paul's writing this citizenship, your citizens of heaven, to the Philippians. Now, the, Philipp, the, 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 the church in Phil, Philippi was, was in Philippi. I break through. Um, but but uh, that was a Roman colony. And so the way that worked was the Romans sent their soldiers there and different citizens, they would go there as citizens of Rome and they would populate that area. One, to bring the influence of their culture there, but also to get the soldiers. So all the soldiers that had killed people and stuff wouldn't all be in Rome. So they're out there, but they're citizens of Rome even though they're in Philippi. And so Paul then says, you're citizens of heaven, even though you're on the earth. You are colonizing the earth right now with the rain, the goodness, the life, light, grace, beauty of heaven right now. We are going to be an answer to the prayer that we pray. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So citizens of heaven. Here's another theme. God will be all in all. God will be all in all. So back to 1 Corinthians 
15, a little bit more of that passage there, God will be all in all. You keep reading down the first fruits, as in Adam all die, Christ all will be made alive. Verse 24, then the end will come when he, Jesus, hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And it, it's this all in all idea that God, that we are made for God to fill us up. We, the, the earth was made for the glory of God. Habakkuk 2 verse 14 says, The glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. What does that, that mean? That, like the seas do cover the sea. The water does cover. But the, the, the idea is that God's presence is so, like we're distinct from God. We're not God, but he made us to be containers, to be filled up with his presence. He made the earth to be filled up with his glory and presence and life and love. God will be all in all. And you know, that, that's Jesus finishes the, one of the commissions, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now go preach what I preached and teach what I taught and teach people to obey and live in the reality of my reign. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 says the mystery has been revealed. Everything in heaven and on earth is going to be summed up in the person and headship of Jesus Christ. Whew, he's all in all. Another theme there is new birth. Now we've already touched on this. But from, from Romans chapter 8, but creation is groaning. We're groaning. We want to see what we will be. And there's this birthing process that we're in, this tunnel that we're walking through right now that where change is on the other side. We don't fully understand it all yet, but there's a birthing that's going on there. And God's doing that, uh, that, that birthing in us. He's wanting to bring about his life in a way that's more fully seen and manifested. The way Paul says it, the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God on the earth. Creation is longing for it. So there's a new birth that just not only from being born again with new life, but continuing to express that in beautiful, wonderful ways. The last theme I'll mention there is the marriage of heaven and earth. So the marriage of heaven and earth is, there's different places you could go to explain that, but Revelation 21 and 22 or Ephesians chapter 5 about that husbands and wives are a type, a shadow of the heavenly reality of God and his people, of heaven and earth. It's, this is the trajectory, you know, God coming to us, heaven coming to earth. And so there's this marriage, like we really fit together. We fit together and we, fit to, we were made to fit together with God. Heaven was made to not just be this distant Greek dualistic, it's out there somewhere, but to overlap. And that overlap is a whole lot closer than what we think. Not out in distant space, but very near to us. There's this marriage of heaven and earth that's coming, and, and the new Jerusalem out of heaven, and God being with us, God being our people, and him saying, Behold, I make everything new. I'm making everything new and right. So there's so much there, and I've, you've got the scriptures on your outlines. I really want to encourage you. Be thinkers about this. Think about, and I'll just give you some handles here. Let's, how, do we how do we live into this future? How do we get there? I've got three thoughts. One is we are envisioned by hope. So this, this hope, what your hope is, is going to shape you. Um, Proverbs says that, that without vision, people cast off restraint. And so when we have a vision, it helps us to live, and to, to, to live into a way that we're moving into the future. But without a vision, if we're not envisioned by the hope of what's coming, we'll just do whatever. If we just think, hey, we're out of here and we're going to float on a cloud with a harp, I mean, that's not envisioning. That, that's not empowering. A Hollywood vision of dry ice on a sound stage with a white background and people walking around bored, that, that is not empowering for us. It's not envisioning for us. And so that's why the language of the Bible and new creation and things being made right and restored 
and, and holy and just and righteous and, and hope-filled and, and broken people made whole and sinful people made free and out of bondage. Even the, 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 the creation itself is in this bondage to decay. And so we've got a vision for more than that. We're envisioned by hope. I can't, you know, sometimes I've discipled different artists and musicians and and I think when I started talking about this, that we're to live lives that express heaven on the earth. I mean, they get a hold of that. They start writing songs and lyrics and, and expressing worship songs that, that say, this is the way it's going to be. And we're living into that. But here's the thing. I want to just say, it's not just for artists and musicians. It's every single vocation there is. Unless it's a vice and, Ill, you know, illegitimate. You know, th th there are things that are wrong. But... But all the vocations that are right, how does being an audiologist help to make things right and helping people hear? You know, how, how does giving people a roof over their heads help them to live a more flourishing life? I mean, and you could do that with whatever you do. And I'm, I mean, it's important that we talk about this and work through this and envision our young children to grow up thinking this way so that we can be creative contributors to what God's doing to build his kingdom, to express his reign on the earth. So envisioned by hope, man, that's every single walk of life. Nobody's left out. Moms, dads, stay at home, kids, whatever your work is, whatever your school thing is, think this way. And we will be building together, envisioned by hope. The second piece is empowered by the Spirit. Empowered by the Spirit. We can't do this. I can't do this, I can't, I'm not creative enough, but the Holy Spirit is in me, and he's renewing my mind and helping me to think even like thoughts like this sermon that would possibly, potentially, stir some people up listening to dream for more right now. That's the power of the Holy Spirit at work in me, and want it for you so much. I mean, two weeks, Pentecost, we're going to talk about we are the church and we have been empowered by the Spirit. And that's what matters in the way that we live and move forward uh, just in, in life. So envisioned by hope, empowered by the Spirit, and engaged by love. So it's love then that, that moves us to action. Love is the thing that we want to be known by more than anything else. That's what we're to be known by as disciples. You're going to be known as disciples of Jesus Christ by love. Think deeply about that. It is the biggest doctrine. It is the greatest doctrine. It's the most important doctrine and teaching that you can talk about, period. His love. It's the greatest commandment. It's the greatest commandment. It is the ethic of the new creation. It is the ethic of the new creation. We ask ourselves, what does love require? That's, that's how we move forward. What is, what, what's love in this situation? And, you know, we've, I've already been talking about it in some of the midweek videos, but I want to encourage you guys, as we move together and move forward in these days, let love be the marker over our lives that really helps us prefer one another. Love doesn't seek its own. It's not a selfish thing. We're not out there just firing off opinions and judgments about stuff. We are loving one another. And it, this change time is a time to express love in ways that we haven't done before. So it's just a, it's a big, huge deal. It's an attitude about us. It's a, it's a consideration of others. It's a humility about us. It's in actions that go low and aren't standing over somebody else. You're doing it wrong. You're, you know, that kind of thing. And it's, it's not that there's not right and wrong. It's just... We want to be marked in our walking things out by love, agape, selfless, willing to die for, agape, love that's expressed in the cross of Christ and is the greatest doctrine, period. It sums up everything else that we can say. So we're going through this tunnel right now, and this is just a small slice of human history this little tunnel of the coronavirus. But we are also going through a massive tunnel that's called the transition from creation to new creation, from death to life, from being buried to being raised, from hopeless despair to 
filled with hope for all that God's doing in the future. And you know what? We get to be a part of it, you know? I mean, we get to be a part of this incredible God-designed plan for expressing his kingdom. And so here's what I want to do. Encourage you as we wrap this up. I encourage you to think deeply. Think deeply with your family. Just whoever's there with you right now, think deeply about this. What is this going to mean in our family? What is this going to mean in our marriage? To express love like this, to express hope like this, to have a vision for more than just where we're at. What's all this going to look like? Talk about it with your kids. What's it going to look like? I mean, the potential for our kids just being raised up with this kind of hope and vision, and a vision for being empowered by the Spirit and engaged by love. I just, that fires me up, and I think it's the heart of God. What does it look like in your work? And just have deep, what's it look like in our marriages, in our marriage to live this way? So this really does change everything, and that's what God always intended for us to be a part of in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Super good news, and just want us to walk it out together in a life-giving way. Amen. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Oh, Father, we love you so much. We thank you for the grace that's ours in Jesus. And would you, just right now, all, all around the city, all around the region, the nation, the nations, wherever anybody is listening to this message, would you just so capture our hearts with a vision that's from the Bible. It's from your heart. It reflects the whole big picture of your good creation to ultimately restoring that creation through the work and the person, the life, the incarnation, death, resurrection, ascension, and return of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. And Lord, let us live into what you have for us there. We trust you. We believe in you. We look to you. We believe in your good news gospel that you reign, that your kingdom has come and broken in right now in our midst and is continuing to break in. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may you live in this resurrection reality of hope and life, empowered by the Spirit, enacted and engaged by love, and envisioned with hope that changes the world. Amen. Love you guys. Go in peace.